Samantha here from Lone Crow Adventures, the channel where we talk about all things camping, hiking, and backpacking. So you think you're all packed up and ready to hit the trail? Maybe you should give some gear items a second consideration. Today I'm going to share with you six gear items that are often overlooked and can really help you out on the trail. Let's go! All right, so what's the first gear item that you might have overlooked? Aurology cork ball. Now, what's a cork ball and why do you want one? Well, the cork ball is designed to be really lightweight, so it weighs 1.23 ounces, and it's to be used for myofascial release. Now, what is that? Basically, when you hike for an extended period of time, your muscles become strained and there's a thin layer of connective tissue that lies on top of the muscle and underneath the skin. And that is called the fascia. And what happens when you exert yourself is that fascia can become tight and it can start to pull on those muscle fibers. And that's how you end up getting muscle cramps, muscle stiffness and muscle knots. So you can use this little bad boy to work all that stuff out at the end of your hike. So this way, the next morning when you go to hit the trail, you're going to feel just as good as you did on your first day. Now, obviously, there are a lot of different ways that you can use this cork ball. And I may decide to do a video in the future to show you some different release techniques for the various muscle groups that are most often affected through long distance hiking. But one of my favorite ways to use this, and I'll just show you two real quick. Just take off your shoe at the end of the day and you can roll your foot with it. And if you want a little bit more pressure, you can go ahead and do this in standing. And anybody who has plantar fasciitis, this little guy is going to be your friend on the trail because it is going to definitely help with plantar fasciitis. And it's also going to help to relieve some Achilles tendinopathy. And how you would do that is you would roll the back of the Achilles tendon and you can work it all the way up the calf, getting those calf muscles. And of course, you can also use this to release the glutes, to release the upper traps. That way your backpack's been sitting on there all day. Some of those muscles get tight. Definitely an item less than two ounces, definitely worth carrying. The second item that you might not have thought of bringing on your backpacking trip is a pair of nail clippers. And these are just a small pair of Revlon clippers. These ones have a weight of 0.6 ounces and it also does have a little file on the back. Now, why do you need nail clippers on the trail? I know I'm not the type of girl that likes to do my nails on the trail, but this comes in really handy for some multi-day trips and long distance backpacking because those toenails are going to grow, especially if you're doing any kind of terrain that has incline and then a lot of descents. You definitely want to keep those toenails trimmed up nice and short, number one, so that they don't start to hit the front of your shoe, and number two, so you don't get a lot of gunk and build up and dirt underneath your toenails. So I definitely would recommend just throw a pair of clippers. You can throw that right into your hygiene kit and that way you can keep your feet nice and healthy when you're on the trail. The third item for backpacking is one that a lot of people don't think about and that is titanium tent stakes. Now I'm going to compare that with the original tent stake that came with my Marmot Crane Creek ultralight two-person tent and this is the Z-Pax six and a half inch titanium tent stake. Now the Z-Pax one weighs 0.28 ounces and the Marmot Crane Creek weighs 0.58 ounces. Now that doesn't really sound like a big weight differential, but when you consider the fact that my tent requires eight of these, I can carry eight of the Z-Pax one for half of the amount of weight that I can with the Marmot one. So it's a total weight savings, at least for me, of 2.24 ounces. And on trail, especially when you're doing distance, every ounce counts. The fourth item that you may not have considered is a bug net. And I would argue that if you're doing spring or summer backpacking, a bug net is a must have item. I cannot tell you how many times I've had this in my pack and had to whip it out very unexpectedly to deal with either high mosquitoes, gnats, black flies, any amount of just annoying, biting bugs. This is just a cheap bug net off Amazon. It weighs 0.63 ounces. It just 
goes on right over your head. And I would recommend that you wear some kind of a brimmed hat so that way the bug net's not hanging right in your face. And it's really, really ventilated so that way you're not going to have bugs flying in your eyes, flying in your nose, flying in your ears. If you have a bug net and the bugs are bad, you're going to be the envy of everyone else on trail who didn't bring one. Now, the fifth backpacking item is a backpacking item I've seen so many new backpackers forget to buy or not even consider, and that is a poop trowel. This is the Deuce of Spades, and it weighs 0 0.42 ounces. It's the Deuce of Spades number one. There is a number two that weighs a little bit more, and it's a, a little bit thicker. But this is just a lightweight aluminum trowel, and what you use this for is when it comes time to do number two, you dig yourself a six inch cat hole and you take a squat and you aim for the hole and you bury your mess. Now, if you go out on trail and you don't have one of these, then you're going to be stuck in a predicament where you're trying to use your trekking poles to dig a hole. And honestly, for the weight of having less than half an ounce, throw it in your pack, throw it in there with some hand sanitizer and some wipes, and that way you can get number two taken care of. Now the sixth backpacking item is one that a lot of people don't even consider, but then they realize there's a problem once they get on trail, and that is underwear. When we go through our normal lives every day, we're probably wearing cotton briefs or cotton boxers, and those materials are fine for everyday activities, but when you get out on trail, those materials are going to just hold that sweat right next to your skin, and it's going to lead to chafing. So I definitely recommend that you take a look at some breathable material underwear. Now these ones here are just a bikini style underwear. It is made out of a 98% polyester, 2% spandex. So it's got a little bit of stretch to it, but it's definitely wicking. So as I'm hiking and I'm sweating, the moisture is not going to build up in here, which is definitely going to reduce the chances of chafing. It's so strange to think a lot of people don't upgrade their underwear. I mean, we go out and we buy expensive merino wool hiking socks, and we don't even realize that, oh, I got a problem with my underwear until you're actually out on trail. So go ahead and get yourself a nice breathable pair of underwear, and you don't need to spend a ton of money on that because nobody's gonna see them anyways. If there's anything that is breathable that's gonna keep you dry, it's gonna be your friend on the trail. Those are just a few things that I've found to be really helpful while I'm on trail and I hope that you've had a light bulb moment in at least one of these six areas. That way you can have a better experience on trail. Now if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, now is the time. Go ahead and do so. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and we'll see you guys on the next one.